Let's post a screenshot in the Discord and we'll jump on into some Feather here. So this Feather deck is card for card. Um, this Feather deck is card for card. What we played last time in the main deck, I was pretty happy with that. As far as the sideboard goes, I've added a couple copies of Flame Sweep here. And if we play against Bant Scape Shift and it feels hard, we can go up copies of Flame Sweep or we can play some of the the Sun Enchantment. But I think I want to start with two. I feel like this deck's got an aggressive enough slant that we can probably beat Scapeshift a lot of the time, like get under them because they don't really interact with our powerful threats. So I think if you wanted to hedge Scapeshift more, you could definitely play more copies of Flame Sweep, but I would be surprised if more than that feel necessary. Yeah, we got three copies of Domri's Ambush right here. I agree, this card's very good. T Moore, thanks for the seven month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I'm going to grab a snack here before we dive into this one. Praise be to the London Mulligan, for it is good. Uh, I think I'm ditching a God's Welling here. So I think because I drew Season here... I'm actually going to go ahead and lead on the Sacred Foundry rather than the Temple. So I can guaranteed Season on 2. Because if I play Temple on 1, this is tapped still and I can't Season on 2. Yeah, maybe Hacksaw. That's probably... Lazotep Plating is probably worse than Veil, vale, right? Oh. <sighs> 62 weeks, one day, 12 hours, 7 minutes, and 8 seconds until Tefri rotates chat, but not that anybody's counting. Not that. Not that anybody's counting. Uh, I like I like Naya a lot. I think Spellbreaker is a great threat. I think a lot of the other cards you get with this archetype is also reasonable, but I think Spellbreaker is a great threat. You know, I almost said we're going to shock in to hold up God's Willing, but that's not something we're able to do because this card's in play. So let's just, let's just cast our Divination here. Mm, you know what? I guess I could have Domri's Ambush to kill this. Really glad I didn't Domri's Ambush to kill that. Really glad we didn't Domri's Ambush.
This was an incredibly good draw. Un unspeakably good. There's a good there's a good chance we win from here. The swings, the swings in this format are bigger than you will find on a Giants playground. They are incredibly huge. God's billing does not protect from wrath. God, protection is such protection is such a rancid mechanic. It is so completely unintuitive and garbage. I cannot believe they brought it back. <laughs> it sucks. It sucks to play against. It's completely confusing to new players. Yeah. They know about both of these God's Willings. So, like, this is their plan to just, like, like, just burn through them, I guess. Now, I think that's very wrong, Monger. I think, on average, God's Willing is much better. The fact that God's Willing lets you make your creatures unblockable a lot of the time, too, is a huge deal. So protection, protection does not stop your creatures from being destroyed. Protection stops your creatures. Protection stops your creatures from taking damage and from being blocked by, but it does not stop them from being destroyed. It, it very explicitly does not do that. In. You missed the scry by not taking the triggers the other way around. Sure. That's fine. We, we kept a bunch of them anyways. I don't think it really matters. Man, there were some people who weren't sold on Season of Growth when we played this deck last time. I hope anybody who was wondering 
if Season of Growth is good in this archetype, is no longer wondering that. It's only a matter of time. I hope there are I hope there are just zero doubts in your mind. Look at look at all these scries to the bottom. Look at look at so this was a mulligan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we scryed the bottom seven times between this card and this card. That hurts a little bit because I don't have another. I don't have another toy. Yeah, and it just actually drew cards too, right? Wait, really? They have another Kaya's Wrath. This must be Kaya's Wrath, right? How do we feel about just burning this? Nah, I don't think I could do that. I think I want to protect this Dreadhorde Arcanist. I'm going to avoid playing this land in case they play the 3-4. Well, those lands don't cast Kai's Wrath. I think Adanto is frequently one of the best cards in this deck. Also, can we just talk for a moment about how this is the first copy of Feather? We didn't see the card our deck was named after until we were 40 cards into our deck and it was just like no big deal. Are we done here? We're done. We're done here, right? Feather works with Defiant Strikes that are cast out of your discard pile here, too. So that Defiant Strike's going to come back to our hand here in a second. Yeah, yeah. Season, in a lot of ways, is like copies of Feather 5 and 6. Yeah, yeah. There was a, there was a point on this in this game where my we had no board and our opponent had three active Planeswalkers. Good lord, the scrying power. The scrying power is just so good. It's just so good. There's like no half our deck right now. Sure. You got them. They're dead. I think this deck's pretty good. I don't know. I, I, when I was playing this deck last season, I never felt like I was I, I was just unwinnable. So notably, I'm casting this Defiant Strike during my opponent's second main phase. So that way during their end step, it comes back to my hand. You think the scapeshift matchup is... Can you explain why the scapeshift matchup is bad? Because on, on the surface, I feel like we should be able to race scapeshift. They dead. I feel like there's a good chance they're dead. I haven't counted yet, but I think that's lethal. I get to scry again. Scry me a river, baby. Yeah, I've got I've got some flame sweeps in the board. And we could we could play more of those. Nexus, I would believe, is hard. Nexus is Nexus's goldfish is is pretty quick. And the escape shift, the turn they go off, you get another attack step still. Yes, yeah, sir. This is match one, game one. It's been it's been a treat. K 
cast the God's Willing you face up in my hand. Triggers. Maybe they're hoping I deck? Maybe they're hoping I deck myself. I would believe that Scapeship with Cavalier of Thorns is bad for this deck. In a pure race situation, I think we're probably pretty far ahead, but I would believe if they're on Cavalier of Thorns that we have a hard time. That that I would buy for a dollar. So you get to cut Shocks and Reckless Rage and bring in Fry and Gideon. Yeah, the Yarok deck probably has a good matchup against this. Because of Cap the aforementioned Cavalier of Thorns and Disfigures and Noxious Grasp and Cerulean Drake and Trophy. I think Scape I think um Flame Sweep to beat Scape Shift is fine, JW. Like the like the Bantscape Shift decks don't pump out as many the Bantscape Shift decks don't pump out as many tokens right after Scape Shift again. Yeah, last last weekend I would not have any cards for Scape Shift. I've got two flame sweeps in my sideboard right now, and we could play more than that. What matchup is the third fry for? I don't know, maybe this one. We play, we play enough decks on this stream that I don't have sideboard plans written down for all these things. I kind of loosely put in cards that seem reasonable, and then we kind of sometimes change them as we go. The third. The third fry could be a flame sweep. Clarion for beating up Nissa decks is interesting. That could be okay. I could, I could see that. Fry is good in the mirror. That's true. It's good against uh, Mono Blue as well. Clarion kills our 1-3s. I mean, we can make our 1-3s bigger though. Hey, AJ Crowner. Thanks for the brand new Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. Yeah, the, flag, the fact that the green hate card doesn't stop Nissa activation seems like a pretty big miss. This is such a great curve because this is good against spot removal. They can't use spot removal on this this turn because it's hexproof. And if they have Kaya's Wrath next turn, my Vanguard survives. It's a pretty, pretty clean, clean curve here. Would love to draw a God's Willing or something we can trigger Feather with next turn so we can just drop that and immediately get some value. Any recommendations for the Nexus slot in Best of One? Yeah, you can play a four mana Jace Crower. We've played we've played some games with that before. If you wanna if you wanna see some games with the Jace, you can check out my website. There's a playlist of us playing that deck up there now. Settle Wreckage is generally pretty slow and clunky to hold up, and not something I'm a big fan of generally. Contempt. Boros Charm resolves. Boros Charm resolves. For people, for people that are new to magic, um, Boros Charm is a two mana spell that deals four damage to the opponent.
No, I'm not writing any articles consistently right now to Oglesby. Putting out, putting out a high quality content piece on a weekly basis takes like three to five hours worth of time a lot of the time. And I'm, I'm at a point in my streaming career where I'd rather just spend that time streaming. It's... When I have, when I have, I have, uh, I have an open invitation from Cool Stuff Inc. to write, um, write whenever I want. So, occasionally, if I have something worth saying that I feel is worth saying, you'll see me post something up there. Like, when rotation happens, you'll probably see me post stuff. <laughs> How much for a low-quality article? I could probably hammer out a low-quality article in, like, less than two hours, but... I don't like to take people's money for doing low quality work. We did just win without ever drawing a single non-creature spell. This deck does that frequently, actually. How are we doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're out in the world. Thanks for dropping in here today. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, sometimes even 50 hours a week. If you enjoy Constructed Magic, this is definitely a channel for you. We play a ton of different decks here, and we change decks every uh, 60 minutes to two hours, so you get a lot of variety in what we stream each day. As always, love to give a shout out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without their support, so thanks to all of them for keeping me employed. I'd also like to plug a couple of my wonderful sponsors here really quick. The Nerd Rage Gaming Championship Series, a $5,000 cash tournament series that happens every single month in the Midwestern United States. If you can't make it out to the Midwest to play in one of their standard, modern, or legacy tournaments, be sure to check out their streaming coverage as well at twitch.tv forward slash NRG series. Daddy! Thank you for sharing that prime. There's a lot of great people you can send that to every month here on Twitch. Thanks for sending it my way this month. BCW Supplies are the only ones I trust to protect my paper, magic, the other in cards. Using code JEFF10, you can save 10% on all of your purchases at bcwsupplies.com. If you're going to be at Gen Con next weekend as well, I'm going to be there also. Be sure to stop by the BCW booth. They always do a giveaway every Gen Con, which is sweet. <coughs> Woo! Cardsphere.com is a peer-to-peer -peer trading network that would love to help you turn your cards into other cards directed to their players. There's no haggling, and they just take a 1% fee off the top. And, of course... Don't make your life garbage time. Join us in Hoaglandia today by subscribing to Jeff Hoagland with Twitch Prime today. He still finds time for Dota Underlords. To be fair, we talked about Dota Underlords not counting as work. Dota, Dota Underlords cuts into my fun time. It's my, it's my hobby time. Sure, a little bit land heavy, but one of them scries at least. Look at that, as good as drawing a card. Odo the Bobcat, coming in hot for the ninth month. I appreciate that, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. What do the what do the kids say? Is it YOLO? Oh, it's flesh eating gnome. They're a sub here, and they also stream on occasion. The fact that they're a sub here could mean that this is the Sultai Yarok deck that we talked about. We talked about being a bad matchup for us. Yeah, I, I, I started enjoying Underlords less when I got to the higher ranks. It felt like, I felt like I didn't understand why I kept losing and the game doesn't give me a good measure to figure out, to help, help guide me basically. Well, they don't have a Field of the Dead yet, so that's good. Huh? I guess this kills, this kills like a Yarok or a Cavalier next turn. Fine to leave on top. 
And this is kind of what I was talking about earlier when I said it felt like this deck has enough aggression on average to like get under these decks. So we'll see if that comes through. This is the Cavalier of Thorns we talked about a second ago. Looks like it. All right, they found a field. So this next turn's actually pretty good for us though, right? I get to shock this in. I get to go Domri's Ambush, this, shoot this. And then I get to play this, and then I get to flashback Domri's Ambush, this, shoot this, attack them. And like I have God's Willing for a Ambush. Ambush is so good in this deck. Cause this gets a counter from its trigger and it gets a counter from the Domri's Ambush, cranking it up to six. They go to two. And next turn, I can actually God's Willing, flashback God's Willing, in addition to having a, th a fourth attacker. So like, even if they're, even if they're a scape shift deck, they get to like scape shift and then I get to protection from black, kill them through the zombies. And we, we are using every bit of the buffalo here. Yeah, they floop they floop to cavalier back up on top they also have two cards in their hand here so if they have if they have like land into like risen reef cavalier we could be in trouble why didn't i use the legionnaire to kill the zombie token because i needed a 1-1 one -one counter on this dread horde so that way it could flash back the ambush because this can only recast instants and sorceries that have converted mana cost equal to less than its power That's a second field of the dead. Blood Sun does turn off Field of the Dead. It uh, with Blood Sun on with Blood Sun in play, Field of the Dead enters untapped and doesn't do anything. This card's pretty good against this Sultai deck. Charles! Thanks for the 13 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Reckless Rage and Shock both seem a little bit mediocre. What do we think of that? Is that going down? Is that going too low on things that target my stuff? There's only 11 now. Maybe I want to leave a couple of Rages in. Like double, double Rage kills a Cavalier. I guess Fry. Fry kills Yarok and it kills Reef. Do I want, do I want Fry? Maybe I want slightly less threats. Huh? I don't know. It feels like feels like we go in a lot of different directions in how how we want to play here. No, Blood Moon's a terrible card that's never going to be reprinted. Blood Sun is the enchantment of which we're talking about. Sure. Morn and Will. It's a pretty good one. Yep, their start here is very good. 
Hoping to hit an untapped land here so we can start jamming spellbreakers down their throat. Probably gonna be too slow this game. They have like a Yarok here. Just two, two Reef Yarok. We are on the play game three. Definitely the case. I think I'm mapping the right side board. Let's run it back. Yeah, Alpine. Alpine Moon was not a card that was printed for standard, to be fair, though. Alpine. Alpine Moon was very clearly an attempt at printing Tron 8. I don't know. I don't know that I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it worked, but it was an attempt. There was there was an attempt. I think I just put them under pressure when I'm on the play here. I think I'm going to go 2-3 rather than play this. It gives them a window to trigger a Risen Reef, but I think that's fine. I think I want to be attacking for 6 on 3. I would have, I would have shut that down. I'm going to change my mind. Let's play that. No. Designs designs like Blood Moon are terrible. To set, a, to set a bar that's actually incredibly high, designs like Blood Moon are even worse than things like Tef Free Time Reveler. They can't have Cavalier this turn because they don't have they don't have double green currently. Dogsby, thank you for the half of your support. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. We're hoping to draw something that triggers triggers with feather next turn. I have a Yarok here. Grasp plus reef, maybe. There are no basics in this Naya deck. He's got two thumbs and no time to play around sweepers. This guy right here. It's a zombie ambush. So I can't, I can't pro black and pro green. Because when I cast this, it will get exiled by Feather Redeemed. 
So I can't I can't play this and jump start it with this. This this is not optional. They work they work together well when it comes to like kickstarting it back and then getting it back with feather. But in this in this particular instance it does not work particularly well together. That being said, with another haste creature here, we're in a pretty okay spot. Wonder if we'll see them like panic crack this uh, this memorial if they don't have any outs. They don't have a flying blocker for this currently. And even if they did, I can god's willing past it. Yes, Cavalier Thorns into a second field might be able to get them out of it in the long term. Maybe. gonna hang tight on I could get greedy and like God's willing here to just like get it back but if they have a removal spell I just die so pro black on the legionnaire is not good game if my opponent has a removal spell so I'm attacking like this because they're just dead to this attack which makes them pull the trigger on a removal spell and then I get to God's willing to protect so I just want to pass priority and let damage happen here so if they have a removal spell, playing my spell proactively gets blown out by it, and that's not what I want to want to have happen. Especially when they're well, like, if I wasn't attacking for lethal there, I'd probably make them have it and like go for the lethal there so they don't get to untap and draw more cards. But because I have them dead anyways, it's correct to hold the gods willing. Yeah, it had some good back and forth there for sure. And this feather deck. This feather deck is just an aggressive deck that just generates what I consider genuinely good games of magic a lot of the time. There's a lot of, a lot of back and forth and choices on both sides. Yeah, good game, Stone. Good luck on your ladder grind. How many days until the season ends? The season ends in a week. But our, our, ladder, our ladder ranking is irrelevant because this month's season is the same tournament that you qualify for that the last two months are for. So I qualified two months ago. So finishing the top 1,000 here just doesn't, just doesn't do anything. Gratis, thank you for the three month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. In. But to answer your question specifically, ladder seasons end on the last day of every month. Don't don't you worry, twin. I I am confident that between now that between now and next next Wednesday we can fall out of the top 1000 I think I want to land here huh Might be, might be running a little bit close on my life total here. Our our mana base is definitely not free, right? Like we've taken, we've taken six damage from our lands. Maybe maybe I'm supposed to play Dreadhorde Arcanist this turn, just like tap play and Dreadhorde Arcanist shock your thing, because like this could threaten to flash this back next turn too, which would be nice. Something that's kind of sweet with Feather, Arcanist, and Shock is you can Arcanist Shock your own thing and bring the Shock back to your hand with Feather to save it for later. When Season of Growth is out, that line also draws you a card, which is excellent.
So I think I do this. And then this kills Sorin, and now this is a 5-5. Five five. So it can block the Vanguard profitably. Assuming they don't have a third Sorin, that is, to give it another counter. And with this Ambush and the Defiant Strike down, especially the Season of Growth, if they can't push through the lethal here, we're gonna, we're gonna be in a pretty good spot. Don't, don't worry about rotation. Stop, stop worrying about rotation. Is my number, my number one piece of advice for everyone is just stop worrying about rotation. It's really far away. So I'm gonna chump block with this Arcanist here actually, because next turn the Domri's ambush on here is going, or on here or wherever is again gonna let this block something profitably, which is nice. I'm also just like drawing infinite cards. So I'd like an untapped land that doesn't hurt me here, ideally. Perfect. Yeah, if, the, if season of growth doesn't make you feel things, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. It's, it's incredibly sweet. I don't, I don't even want that at this point, right? Because I don't have enough lands for it. We're looking, we're waiting for like a God's willing. A God's willing would like lock this game up. We are, I think we're ahead, but a God's, a God's willing would put it away. If we don't get like double Othakaya or like Othakaya plus a Sorin plus out of the game, I'm gonna have a, gonna have a hard time doing it. It's an interesting one I haven't seen in that deck before. Thanks for the free damage. I'm gonna pay one and cast Divination here. You cool with that? I think Dead Next turn. They're like, they're like pretty close to Dead Next turn, right? Here's Steven more wild card. You should Chevry. Thank you for the three months of support there. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. So this is 12, 15, so they're not quite dead. I could do two more. It might be wrong to play this, and maybe I'm just supposed to, like, Defiant Strike to try and find myself a God's Willing. Because we're through most of my deck, and I haven't drawn that card yet. I'm going to be conservative for one more turn here and not attack with these Spellbreakers just yet. Maybe I should have made one of these a 7-7. Lifelink here is pretty good. 
I guess Dreadhorde Urquinus is just taking uh, taking one for the team again. Share in my light. Any any game where Feather goes unchecked is just like you win you win and it's not particularly close. This one. This one was only close in the beginning because my lands dealt so much damage to me. Yep, yeah, that is that's basically my MO. If a deck is aggressive and draws cards, I'm like kinda into what it's doing. This feels like what magic would look like if it, they never printed removal. Yeah, kinda. We're gonna run the risk of decking ourselves here. That's not a real concern, right? I'm making I'm making that up. That's not a real thought. There's no there's no way that's a real thought. We still haven't found a God's willing yet. We're like 30 cards into our deck without one of those. Uh, is this lethal? So this is 14, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Can't quite kill them this turn. That one, that one will lock it up on top. Gosh, look how unlucky we are, chat. Look at all these cards we have to discard. Can you believe how unlucky we are? I discard four cards. It's the worst. Maybe, maybe we'll be luckier next game, not have to discard any cards. No! Chat, if this card is Othakaya, we're dead. If this card is Othakaya, we're dead. Oh no! Don't do it. Put a 1 1 counter on something. Whew! Whew! It's just a 1 1 counter. It's just, it's just a 1 1 counter. I don't have experience playing this deck against Scapeshift decks yet. So to answer your question, I don't know. So we get to Reckless Rage here, which makes them pay for more. And then we pick up the God's Willing and prevent the damage. All right, all right. Shock sounds good. Rage sounds good. Lava Coil sounds good. Fry might be okay. Flame Sweep might be okay. I'm going to GP Mini in two weeks. I'm wondering how you think Jun stacks up against the field. Is that modern? What uh, what format are we talking about? Need uh, need some quantification. I think I cut my Adantos here in the aggro matchup, right? I think that's pretty reasonable. I think Jun's fine. I, I personally prefer playing straight green-black. You can find my preferred green black list on my website, but if you really if you really love casting Bloodbraid Elf, Jund is fine. There's a there's a modern Pro Tour Mythic Championship this weekend, so you'll probably be able to get to see good Jund list there. I have been completely underwhelmed by Renin Six. People keep talk. I keep seeing people talking about it like it's the best thing since sliced bread in that archetype, and I just don't get it.
To set a low bar, it's better than Bob. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It is. It is definitely better than Dark Confidant. Sissian like needs a threat, but like it's got some pretty good stuff otherwise, right? This, this card is the card that kind of punishes this draw step that we had here. Or this, this draw, this, uh, this keep that we had in that this is a card we can't interact with profitably. I'm gonna go ahead and just kill this. Um, I'm probably gonna need to kill something to prevent this from flipping next turn anyways. Might as well use my mana right now. They didn't have a three mana play, so I assume their hand has like some cast downs and stuff in another removal. Would not, would not be surprised to see them untap and have another piece of removal here since they didn't have a play last turn. Their hand is probably mana and removal spells. Could have some four and five mana vampires too, but... I'd love to draw a green source so we can draw cards with Season of Growth this turn. That lets me kill Soren, right? Because I do, I do this. Yeah, and then I play this and then this flashes back to Fire Strike and we hit this for six. If we draw another land, we really want it to be a green one. Perfect. My was not quenched. This deck has a lot of sequencing decisions. This deck has a lot of sequencing decisions. Just casting this as Boros Charm, draw a card, scry. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, um, huh. Pivot, pivot. Block. Oh, this deck is so wonderful. It's so wonderful. It's beautiful. Do, do, do. Beep, 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 beep,
Do 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 Which do I prefer, this or Yarok? It's that's a good question. I don't know. There's something. They're both like this and Yarok represent like natural extremes magic ads, right? Give me my gods willing. Give me my gods willing. Not, not bad to dot JPG. God, 156. It almost looks like we're one of them try hard streamers, chat. Man. I hope the next deck is terrible so our rank can get back to where it belongs, huh? When you bring in Takatli on a guard, uh, Risen Reef decks is the primary place. It's also fine against Mono Red. I have no idea, Ziggs. Losing, uh, I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know fully which, which cards are which sets off in. Should have played a red shock on one, so I didn't have to shock to play, play a creature on two. Hey, Galandria. Thank you for the four month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. <laughs> nice, nice metagame card, opponent. Nice, nice metagame card. Good old, it feels so good to be on the positive side of, of that happening for once. Yep. Scrying is so good. Scrying is so good. Yeah, you're not like getting hosed by like main deck D sparks and stuff like that. We don't have a sit. We correct. There are zero cards to disdainful stroke in this deck. Actual, factual zero. That's so incredibly rude, as you will. For the people that are again, I discourage you from even worrying about rotation at this point. But people making arguments that your mana is worse so the deck doesn't function, you really need to realize that everybody's mana gets worse and they're going to print some number of duels in the fall to make some amount of them better. Wow. They must have a they must have a ritual of so, huh? So what that feels like feels feels like ritual of so. Basic mountains persist. That's true. That's true. God, have I me have I mentioned how busted scrying is recently? I feel like I feel like I haven't mentioned how busted scrying is. This deck scries so much. Look at all these terrible cards I didn't have to draw. Exploit. 
When shock's not very good, so you'd rather just have a draw card. Hold on, folks. I'm going to do it again. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Maybe I'm just supposed to double cycle this there. It's possible I'm just supposed to double cycle that there. Ooh, getting a little punished for bottoming the reckless rage. That shock, we literally turned that shock into give my creature 1-1 one, one draw card. Behold. Behold. Season of Growth is a messed up magic card. It is, it is a messed up, it is, it's feathers five and six. It's like feathers five and six that don't die to, it's feathers five and six that don't die to their stuff. Feathers, copy the feather that don't die to sweepers and spot removal. I don't, I think three is too many. Cause like the problem is that like, it's not a threat or a spell on its own. So like when you draw a season, you still have to draw the other two parts of your deck. I think I want to keep the reckless rages in the face of Sarkin rather than Fry. I think that's what I want to do. Well, I have Domri's Ambush for that here still, too. This triggering our stuff is really nice, though. Yeah, I agree. Adanto is a really elegant example of a threat that's good against control that control can't play. That leveraging, leveraging its health total as a resource very elegantly. Yep. Yep. I mean, so part of the problem with that, Clipsy, is that one of the things people are going wide with is Nissa, and Nissa lands don't die to Chandra's down tick. Is that is a very real thing? We're gonna be really sad if they have Legion's end here, which is a card these decks have been playing since Scapeshift became popular. You got him. He's dead. That's still that's still just a one for one. I'd, I'd I'd prefer to have my creature live, obviously, but at least they didn't get this one out of my hand with that too, right? Uh, I think we just beep beep fire up the spellbreaker jeep here. Yeah, I agree, Code Junkie. This this and Black Red Aristocrats are my favorite aggro decks in the format, for sure. This is your first time seeing this deck. This is one of the many really sweet decks you can find on my website, magicesports.net. Lots of great things up there to, to cruise through. Not surprised to see our powerful Planeswalker eat it here. Let's see if they have a way to deal with the Spellbreaker, too. Yeah, no, no Lava Coil there is really good for us. Deafening Clarion seems deep. We have, I have a couple of flame sweeps in the board, and someone else had mentioned Deafening Clarion earlier, and I could see that being okay. Probably. If I was going to be taking testing this deck seriously for a tournament, Deafening Clarion would be on my list of cards to test, I think.
So upkeep, I'm gonna God's willing this and give it pro red. So that way it can kill the Sirkin. Is 10th District Legionnaire good enough? I don't think it is, right? I really want like a Domri's ambush here. Reckless Rage will also do. So I notably gave my Vanguard indestructible there rather than targeting my Spellbreaker because targeting my Spellbreaker is not a legal play because it's currently protection from red. So, scry during our upkeep there, coming in valuable. Giving us a way to clear the dragon out. I think the green-black deck, if you're playing the more aggressive build with Steel Leaf Champion, it's probably okay. The more mid-rangey build that we had played originally is probably awful. Probably never beat Scape Shift. That is an interesting one. Am I giving pro blue so I can kill their stuff? I think I am. Perfect. So I think it's right to kill their planeswalkers here. I think it's right to kill these. I'm only hitting them for eight. And like this makes a 4-4 four, four next turn otherwise. And the other one draws a card. I'm going to hold this back in the event of a sweeper. It's a little bit worse against a piece of spot removal or a discard spell. But I feel like sweeper is how they really catch up here. You have a Rampage too. Okay. At your service. You just gotta work to get yourself in a head place where when, when the game stopped being fun, Sir Helsing, you need to just concede. A lot, of, a lot of the people that I find themselves frustrated with magic are because they're hanging on in games where they've stopped having fun. You need, you need to realize that like in the grand scheme of things, your ladder rank doesn't really matter. And as soon as you stop having fun playing, playing a given game of Magic the Gathering, concede, stop playing, move on to your next match. Magic, magic's a thing you should be doing for fun. So if at any point you stop enjoying it, either stop playing altogether or start playing in a different way that you enjoy. All right, if these are both bricks, we might have a shot. Let's cycle this to try and find a haste creature. Really need a haste creature. There are this, I've been talking about this standard format being very close to modern. And what I mean by that is, for those not familiar with modern, is that there are a lot of decks that feel awful to play against. And there's a lot of matchups that you're very helpless in. And once you realize that you can just concede and move on to the next one, you'll be much happier. Yeah, one good, one good top deck deserves another, huh? I am one again. The swings, the swings in this format are bigger than you will find on a giant's playground. They're huge. Papi! <laughs> do do do. Do, 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 do. Remember, remember that, that that mention of swings here a second ago. I don't think we're beating a third nickel bolas. Third third nickel bolas probably kills us, but we're definitely we're def we're definitely are are through two of them. Probably pretty cold to another ritual assault too. Yeah. We built this city on top decked cards. Do 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 do. Have I mentioned that Girl Spellbreaker is great and you should not be playing Boros Feather, you should be playing Naya Feather?
Haste is haste is OP. Yep. Haste haste is a really good keyword right now. Yeah, I think I think we're behind. Our opponent is definitely favored from a position like this. That being said, Adanto Vanguard is one of our better draws because a lot of their removal doesn't kill it. Obviously not guaranteed to stick around, but it has a chance. If this is a brick, they only need two more or three more bricks because they get a surveil here. Have I mentioned that Scrylands are great? Have I have you taken our Lord and Savior Scrylands into your heart, chat? Have you accepted them? One more brick. 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 Oh man. Oh man. Oh, I'm through both my reckless rages. I think we've died. I think we've died. Come to me. All right. Yikes. I guess, I guess this lets me attack here, huh? How many gods willing are left? Not many. Two. A dragon would rather die than uh, Yarok, the Sultai Yarok field deck is the one that pulled us up. One more brick. 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 No. We were so close, chat. I could taste the victory. We we're so close. We we're so close. All right, it's fine. We get to play game three on the plate. It's going to be all right. It's going to be. It's going to be all right. We get to play game three on the plate. Let's do it. Let's do it and do it and do it and do it again. I love, I love when the deck of the day picks itself out very easily. I love, I love when the deck of the day picks itself out. Takes the, takes the decision off my back. This hand would really love a two mana threat, but our spells are pretty good here. So we're going to keep it. That's what I like to see. How about five cards? Can we go to five? I believe in you opponent. You can go to five. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in your five card hand. Do, 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 do. Wow, so lucky. Kept six cards. Yarok Field, look at that. Everything I wanted for Christmas. Um, the Yarok Field deck was great again today. I just tagged it as the deck of the day the last two days. So I often don't even tag the same deck two days in a row, but I've really liked that one, but I'm not tagging three days in a row. Untapped land. Well, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. Yeah, that's fine. Let's me play a three drop plus hold up God's willing next turn. Have a good one, Locke. These are my cards. There are many like them, but these ones are mine. That does not make chimney soot. Thank you very much. Uh, we have we have no idea, bros. We have a negate. They have lightning strike. Got it. Makes sense. And now this is this is a little bit of an awkward spot to be in. We're sitting here with two reactive cards in our hand. Which is one of the reasons why we only have five of these post board. Yeah, really, really hoping to draw a haste threat here. I guess if we draw a non-haste threat, we can Domri's ambush this still, which is nice. Uh, 
This is effectively a one for one because it prevents her from drawing a card. This is just going to die to cast down though, unfortunately. Papi! Maybe, maybe I want a third... Maybe I want a third copy of that enchantment in my sideboard for these control matchups. It's really good in these matchups. Please make a 4-4. Please make a 4-4. Please make a 4-4. Four four. By Trophy the Field Dead, in response to triggers, the opponents still get a ton of zombies, or do they get canceled? If they don't get a land, they're not going to get... So, uh, it, the answer to this question is, is complicated. I'd encourage you to ask a judge. There are a lot of conditional statements surrounding intervening if clauses, which is what, which is what that is. J uh, Jamblin, thank you for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. I'm not, I, I understand how it works. There's just a lot of conditionals and me, there's so many conditionals that me throwing a bunch of words at you likely won't be helpful. Is the, the TLDR. This thing's going to emblem here soon. You have a way to kill my thing. We've died? No, not at all. Not, not at all. Every opportunity. No, it's it's there's more than that to allure. It depends it depends on if they're getting basics. A lot of a lot of factors. I forgot to plus my Gideon. Hashtag didn't matter, always lucky. That's such a perfect command, twin. I appreciate you. I want you to know I appreciate you. And it will offer assistance. The sky is my domain. I think we're probably dead here. I guess I could draw a haste threat. If I draw a haste threat, we might still be in it. So I can't draw a card with this Reckless Rage, so I think I just hold on to it for now. Maybe I'm just supposed to kill this. Yeah, we needed to see a copy of Season of Growth a bit earlier. And then, like, their prison elements now with Narset partner avails is, like, keeping us from getting back into the game in the long term. He's threat. Good game two. Kind of a miserable game three. That's kind of how magic goes. You play any decks with Yangling, idiot? No, nah, Yangling's not a constructed playable card. Yangling, Yangling's down tick getting hosed by Tefri's down tick just makes it pretty miserable. Yangling, Yangling looked good because my deck didn't do anything. Like when I don't, when I don't have anything in play, like every kind of cute planeswalker like looks fine when like your opponent just literally has no cards in the board, right? I like this deck. Uh, I think the only change I might make is like I mentioned, I might fit a 
third season of growth into the sideboard, maybe over a fry, maybe. I don't I don't know. I'd have to sit down and think about and go over the ins and outs, but even just playing it as it is probably fine too. We didn't get to play against any of the escape shift decks. If you if you're playing against Scape Shift and you feel like you're struggling, more copies of Flame Sweeper, copies of Deafening Clarion could be good. Clarion's an interesting take because it doesn't kill that many of our threats, and we can make them bigger a lot of the time. And Clarion cleans up Nissa Lands, which seems pretty reasonable as well. Yeah, but like the Saltai deck is fundamentally just different than like the Band Scape Shift deck, Marty. So we played against the Field of the Dead deck, but the way that deck operates as a whole is just functionally very different. So like they have the same.